All right, here we are, episode 27 of Meriwether's World. Tonight, we will be continuing on our discussion of insect repellents, finishing up the wild plants that have been proven to be effective, uh, keeping mosquitoes away, and then moving on to commercial products. I have some sad news, though, before we start, and that is tonight, Minnie Weather will not be able to join us. She is totally swamped with homework and uh, just frantically trying to get homework done. So if you hear her screaming in the background, that may be her uh, a little bit frustrated. Starting first with our sponsor, as usual, oops, I always show the wrong side, the Uncommon Bees. They are the premier bee supplier B product supplier here in the Houston area, as far as I'm concerned, but they also send all sorts of stuff out uh, through their website. They have infused honeys, honeys with different flavors and flavorings and wildflowers and things like that, including the CBD oil. Let's move on to why you are here to learn the secrets of insect repellent. So let's jump to the presentation. Uh, let's start looking at what does and doesn't work as far as repelling mosquitoes. Now, last week I started the uh, all the stuff on the wild plants that you can use, that you can harvest, and I believe we have two more of those left, and then we will move on to commercial stuff. But just to recap what we talked about last week, just for those of you who weren't here last week and want to see what's going on, uh, we talked about what attracts mosquitoes, and we looked at DEET, D-E-E-T, which is the kind of generally considered the gold standard for insect repellents. Then we looked at wild uh, plants that have been proven to repel mosquitoes to some ability. Maybe not perfectly, um, but they have some mosquito repelling properties. So just again, what attracts mosquitoes? Basically beer and pizza. So heat, carbon dioxide, lactic acid, which is you know, the acid found in milk and dairy products. Carboxylic acids, which are a class of rather stinky uh, molecules. If you think stinky cheese, like gorgonzola or Limburger cheese or sweaty feet uh, produce the carboxylic acids. Ammonia, which is another thing that we exclude, ex, ex, you know, get rid of through our skin in small doses. Uh, octanol, which is kind of ironic because octanol is also the main flavor and scent of mushrooms. And then just moisture and heat and blue or green light. All these things attract mosquitoes. So you need to find out some way of either reducing these coming off of you or blind the mosquitoes to these, you know, blind the sensors that the mosquitoes use to track down these particular types of molecules. So as I mentioned, DEET, D-E-E-T, is considered the gold standard as far as mosquito repellent goes. It's been around for over 40 years in that time. Even people who use it uh, pretty much constantly, every day, all day long, like foresters, park rangers, game wardens, people who are out in the woods, out in fishing guides, people like that, they show little to no sensitivity from it. Uh, the only real effect they've found is in some cases, in some people uh, that use heavy doses every day for weeks on end is some insomnia. Uh, the way the DEET works is it blocks the octanol receptors, so the mushroom odor. Uh, it prevents the mosquitoes from targeting that mushroom and following that mushroom odor to you. Uh, side note, eating mushrooms doesn't produce the octanol. It is just a molecule your body produces naturally. Uh, DEET is a true repellent in that along with blinding the sensors, it actually, there's something about it that makes mosquitoes avoid it, but only for a while. They've shown that repeated exposures to DEET, the mosquitoes get used to it and it is less effective as time goes on. Now, this is for an individual mosquito. Uh, if you're out by a lake, you know, you go one weekend and then another weekend, it'll be all new mosquitoes. So they'll be all 
pretty much repelled by the DEET as if they had never been exposed to it because it's very unlikely any of those mosquitoes from last week are still there. Excuse me. Uh, the 100% DEET is effective for 12 hours. It blinds and repels the mosquitoes for 12 hours. It is a plastic solvent. That's one of the things people really dislike about it is if it gets on any sort of plastic gear, synthetic fabrics, anything like that, it can cause damage to them. Um, but the World Health Organization does consider it a chemical of minimal uh, human damage, if you will. So uh, its main problem is the odor and it's damaging plastics. And then just to quickly recap the uh, plants that have been shown to repel mosquitoes in the wild. Uh, first is the American beautyberry. The crushed leaves are found to be as effective as DEET in repelling and keeping mosquitoes away. Uh, human toxicity studies are still being done, so it's recommended to rub on your clothing, not directly on your skin. The artist conch mushrooms, those big shelf mushrooms you see on dead and dying trees, Oops. When they are smoldering, the smoke that it produces has been shown to help drive away mosquitoes. Now, the ironic part about that is the smoldering mushrooms also release some octanol, the mushroom odor, the mushroom scent that attracts mosquitoes. But the repellent properties in the smoke is higher than the attractant. So that's good. Um, as far as science behind that the jury is still out on that um, but it has a long use in traditional insect repellents uh, or just the smoke of burning that it was used by the different native american tribes along the gulf coast in their shelters they kept a, a haze of smoke from the mushrooms in there to keep mosquitoes away okay cedar the different juniper genus uh, juniper and cedar are the same plant but the crushed leaves, you need to crush the leaves to release the particular molecules that keep mosquitoes away. Uh, so you can crush the leaves and rub them on you, or you can uh, burn the green leaves. So the smoke also is a pretty good mosquito repellent. The wood also uh, used as a smudge. So if you have a bunch of twigs together, dried twigs, and just have them smoldering, the smoke from that is a fairly effective uh, insect repellent for people that don't already produce all those other chemicals. And it says science says meh. There is some proof that it works, but not it's not a strong one. It is nothing like DEET, uh, so that's a bummer. The dog fennel. This is a common uh, weed. A lot of people mistake it for a true fennel. It is not. It's actually somewhat toxic to the liver. The crushed leaves have been shown by science, scientific testing, that it is a decent mosquito repellent. Again, not as good as DEET, but the dog fennel crushed leaves will help uh, keep the mosquitoes away. Again, this is one you don't rub on your skin. Rub it on your clothing, just crush the leaves and leave piles of it around. Um, but you don't want to consume it because it can cause liver damage over time. Pineapple weed. This is kind of rare down in the Houston area. If you head up more north, especially Dallas and farther farther north, uh, you'll run into the pineapple weed. Uh, wonderful. It's in the same family as the chamomile. And crushed, it has a neat pineapple-y sort of scent to it. Uh, it has been scientifically proven that this crushed leaves will help drive mosquitoes away or, you know, we don't know if they blind them or what, but that is considered a effective mosquito repellent. Again, not as good as DEET, um, but good enough to actually use, especially if you are already not that attractive to mosquitoes or if you are in an area where there aren't a lot of mosquitoes to begin with. So the crushed up pineapple weed, you find this in disturbed areas along trails and, and seldom used dirt roads and Drive, uh, driveways, parking lots, things like that. Okay, Queen Anne's Lace. I like this one because I used to use a lot of this one when I was growing up when I was out in the woods. So the wild carrot, the Dacus carata, the crushed leaves, um, traditionally was used, one of the many plants that was used to try and repel mosquitoes. 
but it has actually been scientifically proven. Uh, those of you who were here last week might remember me saying when uh, my dog and I would go out in the woods, I'd rub us both down with the crushed up wild carrot leaves to help mos keep the mosquitoes away. The, oh, uh, one quick thing on the wild carrots is that you want to make sure you don't mistake them for uh, poisonous hemlock. And if you go to Foraging Texas, let me throw some links up here. Actually, oops, it helps if I use the right one. Um, I'm just going to put all the plants I've talked to about, actually. I'm just going to put them all up, if that's okay with you. Okay, one big post with all the plants. And then with the wild carrot, like I said, if you run off to the Foraging Texas website, look up Queen Anne's Lace wild carrot to learn how to uh, tell it apart from the very, very poisonous hemlock. Uh, you want to, you know, keep mosquitoes away. You don't want to kill yourself. All right. The Southern Wax Myrtle, this is a native uh, understory small tree, really, really large bush that grows through the Gulf Coast and East Texas areas. Uh, rarely seen up the hill country uh, naturally, excuse me, but it is used a lot in landscaping. It makes nice privacy hedges and just walkway hedges, things like that. Uh, the facility where I used to work over in Tomball had all the walkways lined with the southern wax myrtle. And again, the crushed leaves of this plant have uh, been long considered a uh, insect repellent. Science has not really looked into it much. So what we have to go on are people saying, yeah, it worked for me, or people saying, no, it didn't work for me. Based on that, talking to lots of people over the years who have tried it, I would say, again, the Southern Wax Myrtle really depends on your own personal uh, biochemistry and how much of those attractants you're actually putting out. A uh, number of people um, have stated, yeah, it, it works great for me. And an equal number of people said it was terrible. It didn't work at all for me. So, and like I said, science hasn't really looked into it. So uh, give it a shot, see what happens. Moving on, uh, like I said, we have uh, two, I think two more wild plants we should talk about. First being white sage. Uh, number of names for that, the mugwort. Uh, here in Texas, the most common version, you will find it up in the hill country. Art <laughs> you know I hate doing Latin. Artemisia ludovic. Yeah, what it says here on the screen. Um, there are a number of different Artemisia plants around, uh, used in landscaping and so forth. Uh, from what I've been able to tell, this particular one is the most common uh, one in Texas. Like I said, it is more of a hill country sort of thing. It seems to like uh, open fields, dry open fields, uh, that sort of thing. The leaves, uh, the smoke from the leaves is what seems to be the mosquito repellent. Uh, just rubbing it on your skin or on your clothing uh, from a scientific uh, point of view seemed to be eh, not great, uh, but the smoke was a, a pretty potent mosquito repellent. Uh, so, and it is most of the art, Artemisia, uh, plants all have that ability. So if you have some sort of domesticated or landscaping white sage, uh, you will probably find that it works as a mosquito repellent. Uh, like I said, look for it in the hill country pretty much all year round. There'll be some growing. And if it's not growing, there's probably plenty of dried brown version of it around that even when that smolders uh, does an OK job. Uh, definitely better than nothing. Uh, for keeping mosquitoes away. Uh, like I said, East Texas, not so much. This is more of a central uh, and west and, and Great Plains part of Texas uh, is where you're going to find the white sage. And I did... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. 
yeah, I did put up that. Uh, ooh, apparently there is a Central African Artemisia that uh, people use to repel mosquitoes. So that's cool. So I am trying to do the role of mini weather and failing miserably. Um, so hopefully next week we, she will be back. All right, let's move on to the next wild onions. And uh, so onion and in particular garlic, like the domesticated garlic does have a, a fairly strong insect repellent. The issue though is if you eat the onion or garlic, it doesn't do much. You actually have to rub the crushed raw plant on your clothing, on your skin, resulting in you smelling strongly of onion. The, uh, like I said, the garlic, just your domestic garlic works better than the wild onions, but the wild onions have a, still have a, a measurable amount or measurable effect on insect repellent. So uh, you got that going for you, but you're going to smell like onion. Uh, if you're okay with that, if the people around you are okay with that, go for it. Um, but a lot of people are kind of negative towards the being dipped in onion juice or garlic juice. It's kind of unfortunate, really, because I like the smell of onions and garlic. Okay, wow, we're going fast. It's a lot easier when many weather is here. Oh, Angela White Dragus says, any use of the toothache tree against mosquitoes? Uh, no. The toothache tree, uh, I have not found anything that indicates it has any mosquito repellency, wood tick repellency, any sort of insect repellency whatsoever. Uh, bribe her. Sorry, Kevin. Her, her uh, schoolwork comes before making my life easier. So... Okay, we have finished the wild plants. So let us just jump right into what's next and commercial plants. Uh, and then, you know what, I'm going to do this. I am going to just post all the scientific links at once for your viewing enjoyment. That way I can focus just, did it go up? Yeah. Okay. That way I can focus on just talking to you all. So starting with citronella oil. Citronella oil, it's actually, it's like any of the other plant oils in that it's actually a very big mixture of, of you know, dozens, if not, you know, hundreds of different molecules all floating around together. And a list of the, some of the more common ones are there. You know, the citronella, uh, limonene, the geraninol, uh, pinene, things like that. I'm not going to try it. Isopugenol. Um, yeah, so these are all in the citronella plant. Or, sorry, in the citronella oil, uh, mainly extracted from the lemongrass plant. Uh, usually it is in a 5 to 10% concentration in some other inactive carrier ingredients. And according to Consumer Reports, it has less than an hour's effectiveness, uh, efficacy. So it only works for about an hour when you put on the 5 to 10%, the commercially available uh, versions of it. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking at an insect repellent and it advertises, you know, citronella oil as its main active ingredient, this is a short-term sort of thing. Now, it definitely smells better than DEET. Um, probably less toxic, not that DEET as any real toxicity to it, but the whole mindset, I find a lot of people just assume if it's natural, it is safer than anything man-made. So the citronella oil, I say this is if you're just doing a quick run out to the, the mailbox or just going to be outside for just a short amount of time, you know, going to quickly harvest some food from your garden or your backyard, things like that. It's not if you're going to be out in the woods or in the wild for hours and hours. So citronella oil, effective, but only for short amount of times. Okay, the next is just citronella scent. The next time you're at a store that sells like the citronella candles or citronella scented uh, 
torch fuel, things like that. Look and see if it mentions citronella oil or just citr uh, citronella scented. Because if it's just citronella scented, no effectiveness whatsoever. Even though it contains uh, two of the molecules that are in the citronella oil, uh, them by themselves show little to no efficacy. So they don't really do anything by themselves. They need that whole mixture of other molecules in there to work in a synergistic effect to really repel the mosquitoes. So like I said, if you see citronella scent, it really doesn't do anything at all. Whether it's in a candle, a torch fuel, or a repellent spray, you at least need it to say citronella oil, not citronella scent, scented, citronella fragrance, any of those, you're just basically throwing your money away. Okay, soybean oil. Uh, this is another thing that's uh, touted as an insect repellent. And according to scientific studies, it really doesn't do anything on its own towards repelling mosquitoes. Uh, the main thing that it does is it slows down the evaporation of the uh, other active ingredients. So they will add it in combination. Uh, they will claim it as an active ingredient. I don't know how they get away with that, but who knows. Um, like I said, scientifically, by itself, the soybean oil doesn't uh, do anything to repel mosquitoes. It just holds the repellent molecules to your skin longer. So it takes a little longer for them to evaporate away. Uh, so it, think of it as like a, it helps with the time release of the other insect repellent molecules. Uh, one of the things with the insect repellent molecules is you need things that will vaporize into the air, turn into a gas fairly easily. If they do that too easily, they just evaporate away off your skin and, and go away. So the soybean oil hangs out and just kind of, like I said, works as a, a time release agent for those mosquito repellents. So by itself, no real use, but in uh, com uh, combination with the citronella oil, it does stretch it out some. Citronella scent doesn't help because the citronella scent doesn't work to repel mosquitoes. So you need something that has already going to repel the mosquitoes uh, and then the citronella, or sorry, the soybean oil will keep it there longer. Okay, geranol, ger, geraninol oil. This is similar to citronella oil. Um, it has a lot of the same components plus a whole bunch more. And it is considered a medium length effectiveness. A lot of the commercial uh, versions of it uh, can have up to 25% of the geranol oil and they've shown that on the average person you're you know it may be different on you but on the average person a insect repellent with up to 25 percent geraninol oil uh will last up to four hours so you know if you're out you know mowing the lawn or you know something like that where you're not all all day but you're out, you know, between breakfast to lunch or lunch to supper or supper to bedtime or things like that. Uh, the geraninol oil, and it has to be the oil, uh, will offer enough protection to keep you safe for up to four hours. So that's pretty good. Oh, I just see a question here. Angela White is asking, do the, the Bodark or the Osage Orange repel mosquitoes? The fruit of the Osage orange has been found to repel cockroaches and spiders. Uh, but as far as mosquitoes, I have never seen any research or even any traditional use for repelling mosquitoes. But the, the Osage orange, also known as horse apples, uh, people will cut them up. And if you have a crawlway under your, your house, or in your garage, they will they'll put the bits of the or chunks of the horse apple, the Osage orange fruit, in there, and it has been shown to help drive away cockroaches, uh, black widow spiders, uh, brown recluse spiders, you know, little nasty things, probably scorpions too. What else do we have? Ooh, Mark Gibbs is asking about Avon Skin So Soft. 
And uh, I read up about that one and Consumer Reports said it's completely ineffective. Uh, basically, the people who are having an effect or good, good results from the Avon Skin So Soft are people who are already kind of naturally repellent to mosquitoes. But the uh, Consumer Reports and several other product testing companies have looked at Avon Skin So Soft and found it completely ineffective as far as keeping mosquitoes away. Uh, what else do we have? Um, yeah, Tommy Harris asked about American uh, Beauty Berry. Yes, that's very effective. We talked about it last week. If you uh, scroll down to the videos section of the Foraging Ta Texas Facebook page, uh, you can see previous shows and then also over on the YouTube channel. If you search uh, YouTube slash user slash Dr. Merriweather, uh, it'll bring up uh, these edited versions of these videos where I've uh, fixed any sound issues and any other sort of glitches that might have occurred and cut out uh, a lot of the unimportant stuff. Let's see. Okay, so back to the presentation. This is going fast. Ooh, you know what we can do? And now a word from our sponsor. If you like honey and like bees, go with Uncommon Bee Farm, raw, unfiltered honey, and so much more. So uh, if you look earlier in here, I posted a link to the Uncommon Bees, excellent products, uh, bee and bee-related things from wax and propolis and all sorts of variations on the theme of honey. Excellent, excellent stuff, excellent products, excellent people, love them to death. I do. Okay, uh, back to the presentation. So yeah, the Duranol, Duran... Duran in all, in all oil. Uh, tapping my inner uh, Joe Biden here. I can't talk tonight. Uh, so yeah, effective if you find an insect repellent for uh, containing that, uh, especially if it's up to 25% of the oil, uh, can be effective up to four hours. So that's good. Now, the king of natural uh, insect repellents, natural mosquito repellents, really is what's called the oil of lemon eucalyptus. It's not oil of lemon. It's not oil of eucalyptus. It is the oil extracted from the lemon eucalyptus tree, the Corymbia citrodora tree. Uh, yeah. So now what's interesting about this one is it is 80% citronella L. <laughs> Citronella, all, all. I'm a chemist, I can't speak chemistry, uh, which is the main ingredient in the scent, the citronella scent, but it's the other stuff in there that is working synergistically, excuse me, synergistically with the citronella molecule to blind and repel the mosquitoes. So scientific studies have found that a 30% concentration of the oil of lemon eucalyptus uh, is as effective as DEET in repelling mosquitoes and wood ticks and you know, the sort of things that want to come and bite you. So if you are looking for a natural insect repellent, look for ones that have the oil of lemon eucalyptus in it, because those are going to be the ones that will pretty much give you the same protection that the traditional DEET-based insect repellents uh, give you. So how cool is that? And you smell like really excellent Thai food when you put it on. So, okay. Uh, if you remember last week, uh, was it Susan Blackman and I were getting into a discussion about uh, Picaridin and Promethium. And so, uh, because when I am uh, possibly confused about something, I'm going to go back and look it up. And so I realized, yes, I was uh, more dismissive of the Picardian than I should have been. It's actually a very, very good insect repellent. So let's talk about this. Uh, you will find it uh, called Picardian. Picard, Picaridian? Uh, also, Icardian. Um, now, this is not 
a natural molecule. This is not extracted from plants. It is made synthetically. So this is made in a big chemical plant. You can see the structure here. It's a mixture of carbons, hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens. Uh, scientifically, if the concentration of it is under 7%, it's completely ineffective. So 7% or less is not going to give you any sort of protection. Now, if you bump it up to 20%, then it is on par with DEET again. So pretty exciting. Um, one of the big things, well, there's two big things about the Picardidin uh, insect repellent is first it does not dissolve plastics so you don't have to worry about dissolving your tent or your watch band or your water bottle or things like that um, it does not have the same chemical smell that DEET has um, it's a fairly benign odor it is considered non-hazardous to humans however uh, if Chris uh, Martin is out there I don't know if he is or not uh, oh Thank you, Kiri, for pasting, uh, putting up my YouTube link. Awesome. Uh, oh, so the uh, the Picardian is is actually very toxic to salamanders and moderately toxic to fish. So it's recommended if you are going to be uh, like fishing where you catch and release the fish, you probably don't want the Picardian on your hands uh, or anywhere where the fish might come in contact with it. Uh, and then the same with the salamanders. Uh, don't know about other reptiles and snakes per se. Uh, salamanders are amphibians. Uh, and fish, you know, are fish. Um, so the mechanism of toxicity, I could not find. I don't know why it's toxic to fish and why it's poisonous to salamanders, uh, but they've shown that it is. So I just tell people, if you're going to be in an aqueous environment, canoeing, kayaking, fishing, you probably don't want to use it. Uh, also, it does re, uh, slow down the growth of algae in water. And uh, algae is an important part of aquatic ecosystems. So if you slow it down or uh, you know, weaken the algae, you are weakening the whole uh, ecosystem. So really, this is great if you're hiking or uh, you know, backpacking away from water, working in the yard, you know, on the lawn, gardening, things like that. It's really good. It doesn't smell like DEET. It doesn't damage plastics like DEET. Um, it's considered harmless to humans. You just don't want to get it on your amphibian friends. So, yeah, and I put the link up to that. Okay, finally, uh, permethrin. Permethrin. <laughs> ah, I'm just going to yank my tongue out here. Uh, this, uh, originally, this class of molecules was extracted from chrysanthemums. See, I can say that, chrysanthemums. Uh, but the most of the modern Prometheum insect sprays are now synthetic or modified from uh, chrysanthemum molecules. Now, this is not a repellent. It is an insecticide. It will actually kill insects that come in contact with it. So if you, you know, coat your jacket or your sleeping bag or your tent or your hammock with it and a mosquito lands you know, on your shirt, it's going to go, ah, and die and, and you know, Hopefully a horrible, tragic, terrible death, because I don't like mosquitoes. Um, so it's not a repellent. It doesn't you know, do anything until the insect actually comes in contact with it, at which point the insect dies. Now, uh, they've shown that this molecule, it has a low absorbance through human skin. So theoretically, if you put it on your skin, not much is going to get through. And because of that low absorbance, uh, it's considered a low toxicity. Um, however, if you look at the safety data sheet and the government FDA and EPA and all that, uh, the, the Prometheum is considered a potential human carcinogen. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why most of the uh, Prometheum, Prometheum uh, sprays say spray on your gear, on your clothes, not on yourself. 
as far as toxicity to wildlife it is actually very toxic to fish and other aquatic life so going back to the whole canoeing kayaking fishing sort of thing you do not want the promethean uh, to come in contact with the water it's interesting i didn't know until i started doing the research the promethean is fatal to cats uh, it doesn't take much. The What's called the LD50 is actually quite low um, where it will cause a cat to go into convulsions and then very often die. So if you are applying Promethean, you want to do it somewhere where your pet cats won't get into it. Uh, keep that in mind. Now what's equally interesting is it is non-toxic to dogs. So it kills cats, does nothing to dogs. Um, my understanding is it is one of the components in the little flea drops, like you put in the back of the neck on dogs. And that's why you don't use the dog ones on the cat ones. But I could be wrong on that one too. It was just some quickly, frantically looking through some data. But the Promethean stuff, if you're coating your clothing with it, you want to make sure your cat doesn't hop up on your lap afterwards because it can be fatal to them. Um, the other interesting thing about it is it is a very persistent molecule. So if you're spraying it outside, uh, the soil and the grass and the plants and all that stuff uh, will have this particular chemical on them for 51 to 71 days is what's considered the half-life, which means after as long as 71 days, there will still be 50% of those molecules present. Only half of it will have have you know biodegraded so again something to keep in mind when you are spraying this uh, kind of scary really so very effective insecticide but also quite toxic to you know you and your loved ones in a way okay i am going to jump over um whoops i am going to jump over and see Okay, yeah, Mark Gibbs, letting it dry completely on clothing is best. I'm assuming you're talking about uh, Promethean, and yes, most definitely. Uh, the will it dissolve plastics? The Promethean will not, uh, nor will the picardin, picardin stuff. Uh, only the DEET will dissolve plastics. And then again, thank you, Kiri, for putting up my YouTube link. Thank you, Kiri. Uh, apparently, I'm on her featured YouTube loop. Kiri uh, is part of the uh, Homesteaders YouTube channel. Kiri, put your, your link up for your stuff, too. Um, it's really important for you know anyone who's interested in basically returning to the land, homesteading, uh, permaculture, raising you know livestock, like everything from rabbits to goats, uh, chickens, all that stuff. Um, she's part of a large YouTube video uh, collective that has all sorts of wonderful YouTube videos on the subject of homesteading. Definitely something to check out. Uh, chickweed, Angela is asking about chickweed. No, uh, no insect repellent effects from chickweed. The uh, main use for chickweed will be after you've been bit. A poultice of the chickweed will help soothe the uh, the bite some, but it will not repel it. Uh, fire ant repellents. Oof. No. Uh, at this time, I don't know of anything that works as a fire ant repellent. Um, the main thing, unfortunately, are the new crazy ants that are showing up uh, because they don't build their own nests. The crazy ants take over subterranean layers of other critters including fire ants so they will move in destroy the fire ants and take over their mound the problem with crazy ants is the normal ant pesticides don't do anything to them because they don't eat the food that the pesticides are combined with whereas they love eating the insulation off wires off electrical wiring uh, which leads them, if they decide to infest your air conditioning unit or things like that, they will short out uh, electrical equipment because they're living inside it and eating the insulation. Okay. 
Uh, Linda S. is asking, has orange oil at one ounce per gallon been tried for killing crazy ants? That I do not know. Um, I've heard of using orange oil for killing ants and other insects, especially uh, on plants. Based on the large amount of trouble that the crazy ants are causing and the, the reports I read on them, the normal insect uh, pesticides not working on them, I'm guessing it may not. That being said, it's worth trying. If uh, you get an infestation of crazy ants, give it a try and, and report back to us because that would be awesome. Heck, I would say patent it and sell it if it does. Uh, the firing. Oh, okay, excellent. Go to uh, Carrie Hyatt's firing fire ant video, which I guess is the one she uh, posted there, and she has a cool way of killing them. So excellent. Uh, ooh, Gracie is asking talk about current forage like peppergrass. Okay, Gracie, I'm almost a little disappointed that it took you this long to discover peppergrass because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know what, let's just pop over to Foraging Texas. Oh, and just a side note, I've been making a lot of behind the scenes and upfront changes to Foraging Texas, so I really recommend you go back and check it out. Oh, there's peppergrass. This is... Okay. So peppergrass... Here's a good example. It's this horseradish... Actually, here's even a better one. It's a horseradishy flavored grass, weed, small bush type thing that pretty much shows up in December and it's still growing now all over the place. It loves open field, disturbed areas. Absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you right now, you may think bologna is bad for you and you're probably right, but a pepper grass, mayonnaise, and bologna sandwich is actually pretty good eating in my opinion. But then I'm also a guy that eats June bugs and earthworms and, you know, fish heads and stuff. So, you know, I may not necessarily be your best choice. Hmm. All right. Fork and weeds. Yes, fork and weeds. All right. So let us go back. Let's go back to camera one. Okay. Okay. You know what? We are going to end this. Uh, good night, everyone. Love you all. Thanks for coming in and see.